Hello and welcome back to Badger Lodge Garage and today we've got a couple of issues to address things that have broke because that's what happens when you drive old cars a lot things stop working so let's go and have a look So what we've got going on with this at the moment is one of a couple of things, but most importantly the brake lights have stopped working. So that's uh, not ideal. Happened to notice it when I was reversing at night and uh, didn't usually, you, I usually check to see if you can see the reflection on cars and things, you know, just to make sure they're working, because with old things like this that does go wrong. So uh, they're not. Being that both of them are out as well, I imagine it's not going to be the bulbs. It could be, if it had been long enough and uh, both bulbs had gone out. But um, I doubt that uh, both bulbs were blown at the same time. Because they were working not that long ago. So that all that means is something between the power source and the rear lights isn't working. So I'm going to bet that it's the brake switch, brake light switch, which is buried down here. Can you see it? I don't know. There it is. Just here, these two wires. And um, what this switch does is it's just in the brake lines. So when you put your foot on the brake pedal, the brake pressure in the line pushes a little ball bearing up inside this with a diaphragm in it. And that um, closes the switch and puts the lights on. So yeah, when there's pressure build up, it's like a, well, it's just an oil pressure switch that works the other way around. So um, I imagine that's it. Don't know. This is some live diagnosticals we're doing here. I haven't looked, checked this yet. So what I've got to do is going into uh, quite a basic diagnostic. Really, we just need a piece of wire. Ta-da! That's all it is. It's literally a couple of crimp connectors on the end of a bit of cable. I just had this lying about at home because that's another thing that's quite useful to have. Bits of wire, cable. Have them lying about. They're useful for this kind of thing. And for bodgery. We'll get onto that in a minute. But uh, yes, first we'll just prove this concept. Now it's unlikely that both bulbs are gone, as I said. So the easiest place to start is the switch because it's just they just pop off the top of the wires. And what I'm expecting is because one of these is a power wire and one of these is the ground. So if I just pull these off and then join them with the ignition on, the brake light should come on. So as you can see at the moment, nothing. And I might just have to put the camera down, plug it in, and then we'll have a look. So hopefully you can see that the two wires for the brake lights, I've just literally put that bit of wire in. So this is making what would effectively the switch, it's making the circuit. So if the brake lights now come on, we know that it's the switch that's at fault and no other power source or cable anyway. So I'll turn the ignition on. There we go. Brake lights. So that's it. That concludes that the switch is at fault. And that's the beautiful simplicity of these old cars. On um, most modern cars, or quite a lot, they don't tend to have pressure, switch, uh, pressure switches anymore. Um, they tend to be under the brake pedal. It's a switch that actually, when the brake pedal's up and your foot's off it, it pushes on it and breaks the circuit. And you push on the pedal, it lets the little button out and it makes the circuit and the lights come on. But you can do the same thing under the dashboard, just take the wires out and bridge it across. If the lights come on, you're away. So, what that does mean in this instance is I've now got to get a new one of these. And then I've got to take it out and then you break the 
brake system and you've got to bleed the brake. Oh, well, no. Deep joy. I mean, I suppose I needed to bleed the brakes anyway. Great. So that's another one to add to the shopping list for ESM. It's growing. I've got a few. Uh, she's starting to develop a few folks, the old thing, you know. It's, uh, that's what you got to expect when you're driving old cars a lot. I've got uh, the rear drop links for the the dampers for the springs have got to start knocking, I can hear it from the back. I ended up getting my brother to jump on the back bumper while I was underneath it to try and find out where the knocking was coming from. So I've got a couple of them on order. What else is broken? Clutch relay, that's rattling. That's been getting progressively worse. It's on idle. It's got a, you know, lever, direction changer. So when you put your foot on the clutch, it pulls it and rods and stuff. Anyway, it's got two bushes and they and it sits the rod itself sits in between the gearbox and the frame, and basically the bushes wear out and then it just sort of rattles in there. So on idle, that's sitting there rattling away because the engine rocks and that's all. And the engine steady bar's broken off. <sighs> you know, you sometimes wonder why you do things. And now I don't know why did I close that. I didn't want to close that. That was not that was not my intention. I want to leave that open. Don't have a being heckled again. It always happens to me. Anyway, what I was going to leave this open for was to talk about the art of bodgery. And I'm not talking about nature. And I'm not talking about, you know, permanent cowboy fixes. I'm talking about, you know, get you home, you've conked somewhere and you need to get back and you want to do it yourself. Now, one of our, uh, one of my subscribers, and it's quite a good comment. So I hope he doesn't mind me mentioning. I think his name on YouTube, Richard J P A T R Z. I can't recall numbers. I'm sorry. I hope you don't mind me mentioning you. Did a very good. Um, uh, we talk, spoke about field repairs, and he did a very nice video of um, how he got home. When his fuel pump packed up now he said i could use it and rejig it a bit but i think he did a very good description in that video so um go and find his channel and he, he did upload it for people to see and um it's quite a good i can summarize on this but what he basically did was use his washer bottle as a fuel reservoir when his fuel pump packed up it's would be a bit harder on this car because it's a manual pumpy thing and it's definitely not a permanent fixture and how long it would last i don't know but it got him home which is you know that's the idea and the long and the short of it was he used the washer bottle we had a bag now let me get you in here let's be you can actually see what i'm looking at so the concept was using the washer bottle as a little fuel reservoir and then plumbing it in using the the pipes that were already there sort of he wedged something to do with the um, carburetor inlet pipe and managed to cobble it in and then he used the electric pump for the screen wash as a fuel pump just to keep pressing it occasionally and filling the float bowl up to keep going and to, uh, to get himself home now that's quite an ingenious little fix and I like that a lot um, something like this it would be quite hard to do because this has got a manual water pistol type thing you know so you'd be sitting there pumping for ages. But the concept may work. He yeah, had to siphon off a bit of fuel into there, obviously. I think he did it from underneath on his video and drained it out the pipe um, off the tank. Uh, so I won't, I, if you want a better description of that, I'd go and watch his video, Richard JPA, I'll say I think. I'm, I'm sorry, I just, YouTube handles are not my 
strong point, but it's a very nicely thought out and uh, thought out and presented video. Um, if you also have any, you know, field bodges to get you home, do please share them down below. It was uh, quite a quite useful for other people to find out these things. The more people know, the easier life is, and that kind of thing. Anyway, where was I? I suppose in this instance you could actually uh, do a gravity feed on it because there's plenty of height. So if you could find a container to something to put fuel in, you could even use the washer bottle on this, probably put it upside down, seal up the, the vent, sort of hang her up here, straight into the carb, and it would probably um, work. Obviously you have to keep filling up the, the tiny little fuel bowl, but these don't use too much fuel. So, um, yes. There are ways and there are means. And if any of Morris people are looking at that and thinking, that's the wrong fuel pump. Yeah, it is. But that's what it came with and it seems to work. So I'm not changing it. It's, uh, I don't even know what it is. It's always been on there. It's not got points in it. It's an electronic type one. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave that be until it packs up. And then we might have to get creative. <laughs> but it is quite interesting because sometimes all you're limited by is your own creativity and things that you can repurpose to get you home. And I must stress this, there's not a permanent solution. Using your washer bottle as a fuel feed system isn't, is not great. And if you get it wrong, can possibly cause more grief than good. So don't, don't go burning your rig down for, for the sake of that, you know. Just think about it a little bit. These are not these are really not permanent solutions. But do just think, what have we got already here? And what could you have as well, like bits of wire? Now, you mentioned that as well, old, um, I presume your name is Richard. It was, um, it was in the comment section as well about having loose bits of wire, or something I was actually gonna mention, um, funnily enough. But having old bits of wire like that with the two crimp connectors on the end that I had, that's really useful. As you can see, that took like five seconds to diagnose that the brake lights switch was buggered. That's all it was, one piece of wire. And that goes for if you've got damage to looms and things that need fixing, you know, at the end of the day, to run the ignition circuit on this, you just need power from the battery to the coil. So in a worst case scenario, you could run a bit of wire straight from the battery to the positive side of the coil if something in the electrical system has packed it in from somewhere from the key to the, the fuse box or something i don't know i mean there's only four fuses in this car so and it's not going to be one of them normally but as i say one piece of wire from the positive or if you're a negative earth like most cars are hey no this is a positive earth so the power feed is the negative terminal. Because, you know, that makes sense. But basically, power from the battery to the coil, that's all you need. And on this, you've got a starting handle, so you wang it over on the handle and it'll go, you know. That's the theory. So random bits of wire kicking around is good. I haven't tried starting this on the handle for a while. I might have to do it. I mean, it's warm, it's cheating, isn't it? Should I? Yeah, I might do it in a minute. We'll try start it on the handle in a minute. Although it is cheating because it's hot. And you know, we laugh about uh, duct tape and cable ties, but you know, I'm not, I'm not proud. But, uh, you know, just... Yeah. That's just holding the battery in. One day I might actually get a bit of bar to do that. But don't dismiss the cable ties as a temporary permanent fix. Actually, let's have a look then. Let's, where is this? See if it'll go. Need the... Oh, there's some junk in here. I forgot about that. That's the jack. What was that? It's true.
and a little bit of ignition on out of gear because you know I don't want to run myself over that badly a little bit of high idle see you know while we're here it's been a while I like a bit of a handle start where's it where's the thing there it is oh we got some kickback don't wrap your thumb around it otherwise you just break your thumb Just like that. Here's a good car, this. So there you go. Good car, this one. bit tatty around the edges but it does the job does it very well so this time I close it so apologies for the slightly random nature of this video or slightly more random it's going to be more coming up on this plus other bits and pieces because uh, I want to get this a bit more up to scratch it's got a few little niggly things you know not major stuff but stuff that you sort of think that's not a big deal i'll wait till tomorrow to do it and then before you know it it's been a year and you know you've you've added about five of those other little things to the list i know i'm a disgrace but this car hopefully in november is going to be going up to uh, up to the nec for the, the classic car show uh, I want to take you know it's going to be about 300 and 330 mile round trip something like that so we're going to uh, do all the little bits and pieces that need doing I do want to replace the clutch linkage bushes because um, that's just getting annoying I'm going to adjust the clutch on it first because it's getting quite low to the ground I think half of that is the whole linkage moving uh, so I'm losing a lot of adjustment in that but there is also the natural wear of the carbon release bearing so I'll show you the clutch adjustment because that needs to happen anyway uh, obviously when I change the the bushings that's going to change the geometry a bit and I'll have to do it again but it's not hard to do so it's worth doing a couple of times and if you do have your own roadside fixes because you know I'm, there's many out there and they're all specific to an individual situation it's quite hard to list them all because I well, I don't, I don't know really. It's what you come up with off the top of your head at the time. So if you've got one, do comment down below how you, how you got yourself back in your car of any description. You know, be it cobbling fuel lines together or holding things on with duct tape. I'm not going to judge. Sometimes needs must. So I will try and include some more field repairs as we sort of go along. I don't think making a video dedicated to it specifically helps so much i don't know let me know if i can do it better because i don't really i'm i'm not you know i'm quite new to this video making like so thank you for everyone who has subscribed once again uh, more people keep subscribing which is fantastic so uh, thank you very much and we shall continue with these old cars i'm looking to uh do some other bits as well I'm trying to find some other vehicles to have a look at because uh, there's plenty out there to be have fun with we want to keep uh, keep kind of growing this thing and see where it goes so uh, thank you for uh, putting up with this little update and random ramblings and I should probably uh, yeah go and make a shopping list